Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. Since Green Day just announced that their new album, Save Years, is going to be coming out January 19th, today I'm talking about what I think are the top 10 Green Day albums. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlist that we put together every week, and the Patreon page. Make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So I've been a big Green Day fan probably since, uh, it's probably about middle of 94. So I was about 15 years old when I really got into the band. And, you know, they've released some absolutely classic albums. And then they've got some albums that are eh, maybe a little more questionable. But uh, I'm going to go over what I think are the top town albums from, from their career. I'd love to know what you guys think, so make sure you drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think their, their top town albums are. At number 10, I've got an album that, uh, for one reason or another, I I really had a hard time getting into it. You know, I don't know if it came off, it's because of, you know, it comes off of the, the trilogy of Uno, Dos, and Trey. Or, you know, just kind of the bloat from American Idiot and 21st Century Breakdown, which was, you know, the two big rock operas that they did. I think they really tried to start to get, tried to get back to like, uh, back to basics with, with this album. And it worked on a couple of tracks, but didn't work on some other ones. Of course, that album is Revolution Radio. And this is an album that, uh, when this was released, I was really excited to check it out. Coming off of Uno, Dos, and Trey. You know, some good stuff off of Uno, but uh, Dose and Trey, I think, largely are, are forgettable albums. And so I, I understand what they were trying to do with Revolution Radio. They're trying to get back to this more kind of like traditional Green Day sound. And like I said, a song like Bang Bang, which is an absolutely fantastic song off of this album. Outside of that, and maybe a couple other tracks on here, like I said, I see where they were trying to go with it, but just I just don't think it really worked. So really, the album that I've got at number nine, I probably could have flip-flopped with Revolution Radio at 10. They could really go in, in either order. Uh, yeah, it's another album I just don't listen to a whole lot. There's not a whole lot to, to the album that I really love. There are a couple more tracks on it than uh, some of the other albums that came out around the same time. But the album is Uno. This was released in uh, 2012, part of the uh, the trilogy album. So Uno, Dos, and Trey. And with Dos and Trey, I, I, largely I think they're kind of forgettable albums. But what was different about Uno was there's a couple more tracks on here. Of course, it's, it's definitely more like, I, I kind of want to call it a power pop album, you know, which is weird for, for Green Day. It was such a big departure from what they were doing on 21st Century Breakdown and American Idiot, which were these big, huge you know concept albums, these rock operas that, that they did. And they tried to go a little bit of a different route with, with, with Uno. And like I said, it works on some tracks. And then others, it's just, it, it's an album that I just don't go back to very often. Because along the same lines as, as Dose and Trey, a lot of it just kind of gets lost. And I guess I just don't really know the direction the band was trying to go. And number eight is the second of the rock operas. And that is 21st Century Breakdown. And there's some absolutely classic Green Day songs on here. Like uh, 21 Guns is, uh, is one of my favorites. Know Your Enemy. Last Night on Earth, like I said, some great tracks on here that I think, this is, and that's what makes this stronger than some of those other albums, whether it's Revolution Radio, Uno, Dos, Trey, any, anything that they, they released after this one. So the album I've got at number seven is, uh, it's a really interesting album because it's so different than anything else that Green Day had released before it. And opinions on this album are really all over the place. A lot of people either love it, they hate it, or I'm kind of in the middle on it. Even though I do love some of the tracks on here, I think Green Day lost some of the direction and uh, you know some of the really focused work that they were doing earlier in their career. You know, it's still a good album though. That album is Warning, and uh, you know, so before Warning came out, you had you know albums like Dookie and Insomniac and Nimrod. These really kind of focused punk albums even though that they're as they kind of went on you know especially with, with nimrod they started incorporating some other genres into the music some of it was a little more kind of straightforward rock or alternative and then when they released warning i was really kind of surprised because at times almost has this kind of like slow kind of folky you know feel feel to the album which is nothing i expected from 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 green day you know green day was always this like big punk rock band 
and this is a very different kind of album. And, and even though I do love some of the tracks on here, it's got some of my favorite Green Day tracks on here. Macy's Day Parade, I think, is an absolute classic track. Uh, some of the other great ones on here, you know, I guess I can't think off the top of my head here. Uh, of course, Warning is great. Church on Sunday, Fashion Victim, Castaway. Some really great tracks, but like I said, it's just so different from everything else they did in their career. And it kind of showed how the band w w was evolving. So I will say the final six albums are what I consider like the core classic albums from Green Day. I love all six of these for very different reasons. But, you know, and, and like I said, Warning is still a good album. I think Warning sits just outside of these six. So the album I've got at number six is the origin of the band, 39 Smooth, the first album they ever released. And uh, there's definitely a, a rawness to this, uh, to, to, to this album that, you know, you can hear parts of dookie on here you can hear parts of kerplunk on here you can hear stuff from insomniac coffee here but this is kind of the the raw beginnings of the band i know some people don't really love this album because of how raw it is but i think that's kind of the charm of this album so the album that i got at number five is probably the album that took me the longest to get into from this band so this was released uh, later part of 95, well, I think it was like October of 95, the follow-up to their classic album, Dookie. Of course, that is Insomniac. So Dookie and Kerplunk were like the two albums that really got me into Green Day. And they're really similar kind of albums. And then to go from that to an album like Insomniac, it was probably a good year or so before I really got into this album because I think I wanted it to have more of a feel of Kerplunk, of uh, Dookie on this album. And then the more I thought about it, you know, how can a band go from Dookie, which is, you know, selling 20 plus million copies and follow up that album in such a quick time span? I think uh, this was like a year and a half because uh, Dookie came out in like, I think it was beginning part of 94. Then Insomniac came out and I think it was like September, or October of 95. So a really quick turnaround on that album, you know, so, so they had to kind of grow, show that they'd grown a little bit as musicians, try to do something a little bit differently. And while there's a lot of bands out there that it probably wouldn't have worked for, they were able to experiment on this album and really do things that worked and, uh, you know, created just a, an incredible album. I think the next two albums probably could have went in either order, you know, so if you ask me a week from now, I'd probably give you a, a different order, but number four, I've got American Idiot. And this was the album that really, I think, to be completely honest, kind of broke the band. You know, the band had done so many great things up until this point, and they hadn't released anything that I consider bad up until this point. And so when they started the recording process for American Idiot, they actually started recording a completely different album. And then the way the story goes, I don't know if I, if it's really true or not, but they said the, the master tapes got stolen, so they kind of restarted the whole process over again and decided to go a completely different route and do this whole rock opera kind of thing, something that the band hadn't done yet uh, before in their career. And they created an absolute masterpiece, man. This album, I know a lot of people out there that really consider this the pinnacle of Green Day's career because this was the album that really kind of, even though they broke into the mainstream with Dookie, there was so much crossover with American Idiot. I knew people uh, that, you know, never listened to any punk in their entire life that really loved this album. This is the album that kind of got them into so many other great bands from the late 90s and the early part of the, uh, of the 2000s. But I think the huge rise in popularity from this album I think is what Green Day, even, you know, almost 20 years later, still really struggles with, musically speaking, you know, trying to recreate a different sound, really trying to get back to an older sound, because I think after they released American Idiot and they did the whole, you know, Broadway play and, you know, the follow-up with uh, 21, uh, 21st Century Breakdown and try to do the whole rock opera thing again, you know, like I said, I think they've kind of lost their way over the last uh, couple of decades. The album that I've got at number three, I think was the album that really kind of got me to go back and really look at Insomniac in a different way. Uh, so this album was released in 1997. It's an incredible album. It's uh, Nimrod. And this was the album that I think really kind of made me look at Green Day in a different way. It definitely cemented them as one of my favorite bands of all time. I've loved, you know, so many different albums from across their career. And it's really kind of because of this album. So up until this point, I was really kind of more of just a fan of uh, Dookie and Kerplunk. And, you know, yeah, even, even though I like I casually listen to 39 Smooth, you know, listen to a couple of tracks off of Insomniac, I never really gave Insomniac 
the 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 really kind of the the list and that it really deserved. And then the run up to Nimrod, uh, I think uh, Billy Joe was on. Uh, I think it was on like the Conan O'Brien show and uh, bef- before this album was was released and. I remember going down to with down on uh, University of Michigan's campus with one of my friends, and uh, there's, they had this big bookstore down there, and then a listing station set up with with Nimrod on there, and I sat down and really kind of listened to this album, and for really the first time, I think I really understood the progression that that Green Day was going through from an album like Dookie, the highs that they got off of Dookie, to really trying to do something different. On, uh, on Insomniac, and then kind of continuing that uh, that progression on with an album like Nimrod. So I'm sure you've already figured out what the last two albums are. I really don't have an album at number one. I would say that my these last two albums I would put up there as 1A and 1B. I really discovered them around the same time. They're great albums for uh, very similar reasons. But uh, really, I guess at 1B or, or at number two would be Kerplunk. And just because... Kerplunk is just an incredible punk rock album. And it still had that like raw feel of 39 Smooth. And then of course they would continue that on that that sound on on with uh with Dookie. But like this was the album that when I first listened to Dookie and then went back and listened to Kerplunk, it was almost like listening to a demo version of Dookie. And of course the last album I've got at number one, of course, is Dookie. And this is the I think the biggest and best punk album ever released. Of course, as, as far as sales go, you know, it's the highest selling uh, punk album of all time. Sold, I think, 22 or 23 million copies. It was huge when, when it came out. I remember it was like all over MTV. And like I said, I, I've said multiple times in the video, this was the album that really got me into punk music. Now, there was an album like uh, An Outcome of the Wolves by Rancid that kind of got me into different other, you know, bands from, from punk music. I think because of Rancid, I discovered, you know, like Operation Ivy and uh, and the Misfits and a lot of other punk music. But this was the album that really kind of put punk in general on my radar. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Make sure you drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think the top 10 Green Day albums are? Because I know lots of people that uh, would put an album like Warning up there at number one or American Idiot up there at number one. And, uh, you know, music's very subjective. We all have different opinions when it comes to, to music. And especially when it comes to punk music, there's a, you know, you can ask a hundred different people and you're going to get a hundred different opinions out there. But love to know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.